What's going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den and we are gonna cover some top deadlifting tips that have helped take me from a 650 pound pull to a 725 pound pull over the last couple years. So let's get on into it. Oh, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, bing, right there so you can stay up to date with all the videos that are coming out. Thanks. So my deadlift has come very far in so many ways, uh, whether it was technique or programming and just little things that I've learned. So I'm gonna show you guys some videos from the past, what my deadlift looked like, and you can kind of see that it has changed drastically from the setup, how I pull the bar, uh, and, and just ultimately how much weight I've been able to increase uh, by changing a little bit of things over time. That's it. Up, 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 up. Come on. Got it. All right, guys. So actually just getting into tip one, it actually has to do with warm-ups. And I used to spend a lot of time warming up and also taking too many warm-up attempts, uh, just waiting for that kind of that perfect moment for my body to feel right. So instead of doing that, I've just progressively gotten better at taking some bigger jumps once I am warmed up with some lighter weights. And that's not only cut down my workout time, uh, but also giving me more energy to go heavier uh, with my working sets. Now I know that I've talked about it before, but my warming up uh, for any movement, typically I don't have much time, is simply doing that movement uh, with a bare barbell and then I will incrementally add more weight little by little until I'm feeling good and I'll hit my working sets. So something I haven't talked about much on this channel when it comes to deadlifting is my grip. Now in the past I always pulled with a mixed grip. Uh, however, more recently I do a hook grip or I'll use my straps and have a double overhand. And I feel like this has helped a lot with just being more confident in my pull, having a little bit better of a bar path. And I noticed when I had that mixed grip, I was getting a little bit of dominance from one side versus the other. Now the second thing when it comes to grip that I've changed over time has been where my grip has been on the bar. When I first started deadlifting, I actually had a wider grip that was probably maybe like an inch or inch and a half outside of my shins. So being able to bring that grip in over time, I think has made the pull just a little bit easier uh, and it's just kept a tighter bar path, which grand scheme of things, when you're going for a really heavy lift, little things like that do matter. So check your grip out. If you're doing a specific variation, like a snatch grip deadlift or just a wider grip deadlift for accessory work, Obviously that's allowed, but for the way you're gonna pull in competition, you wanna make sure that's how you practice in training. So a lot of you guys in the comment section always talk about how my hips raise a little fast in the deadlift. And this is actually very intentional and something that works specifically for me. And the reason that I actually drop my hips in the setup is one, to get as tight as possible. Uh, and then two, as I'm raising up, you can see that the bar actually doesn't break off the ground until my hips are actually in the right position. Uh, but really what I'm trying to do is utilize the tightness and then making sure that I'm getting proper leg drive. I wanna make sure that I can use my legs as much as possible in the deadlift. And that was something that I made a big carryover from when I first started. When I first started deadlifting, I was typically almost doing like a stiff leg deadlift uh, and wasn't using my quads at all. And once I figured out how to use my quads, my deadlift jumped like 80 some pounds because I wasn't using the proper muscles. So doing that in my pull has really helped me. It's not for everybody. It's a very unique way that I pull, um, but it has made a big difference with utilizing the leg drive as much as possible. One of the other tips that I talk about all the time, but I can't stress it enough is resetting between each rep in the deadlift. Now I'm not saying take five seconds, I'm saying just a simple reset will go a long way. And if you do that, you're gonna get better, one, just practicing the deadlift from a starting position. So oftentimes you'll find people get better from the floor. And then two, whenever you're pulling and you're doing touch and go, there's always gonna be that vibration and slam from the barbell hitting the ground. And that could shift your bar path just a little bit, which is gonna make it harder to perform the most efficient deadlift possible. So when you're resetting, you know you're in the right set position every single time, and it's gonna deliver a better bar path. Uh, and that's just something that's really made a huge difference in my programming. Now I know people will say, well in strongman you have to do touch and go, and as they get closer to strongman, if I have a max rep event, I will start programming in touch and go deadlifts, but in the off season for myself and the athletes that I program, I'm always stressing just taking a second to get into that reset position before you pull, and most often than not, they find that they're getting better deadlifts and their technique is a little bit more on point. We need one more, man. We need like one more to call it like, five deadlift tips. You can't say four, like no one watches the four deadlift tips. 
<laughs> like it's always like one, three, five, or ten. <sighs> so we need a fifth one. What's a fifth one? Think of a deadlift tip. So my last little tip I'll give you guys to think about for your deadlift is actually your head position. So there have been times when I, I was deadlifting where I was looking really far down at the ground, and then there have been times where I was looking up at the ceiling. Um, so kind of what I'm getting at is the happy medium to both of those is just having a neutral gaze. So when you're deadlifting, try to keep that neutral gaze, don't look too far down at the ground or up at the ceiling or move your head during your deadlift, which I've seen people do that before. They start off at the ground, they're looking up at the ceiling, then looking to the side, looking to this side, and uh, people are like, they don't know what's going on. So just try to keep that neutral uh, head position, neutral spine, and that is all I got for today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and there are some deadlift tips. Like I said, my deadlift has really increased over time. It's been something that I've just been passionate about changing because I had a very poor deadlift and I didn't deadlift enough when I was a youngling. And if I give you guys any advice, especially in the fort, the, the fort, fort, fort tonight. No, and especially in the sport of strongman, you want to have a big deadlift. So I'm on the pursuit of trying to figure that out and teach you guys everything that I can. But if you haven't already, make sure that you guys go over and join the Iron Lines Facebook group. We are a very strong community, have everything to do with bodybuilding, strongman, powerlifting, all things strength sports. We have articles, we have technique tips that we put out weekly, just great people trying to help each other out. It would mean a lot to me if you guys went over to that group, join the group, we get to see you and meet you as a lifter, which is super badass. You get lots of little perks and special bonuses that come along with that too, which you'll find out on the inside of the group. But join the group if you dare. And uh, yeah, we got Alan Thrall coming October uh, 19th and 20th for the Heavy Metal Barbecue. Life is good. And uh, that's all I got, again. So, be a Lean Mean Track Machine. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Peace.